What are you doing in there, Kevin? I see you. Hmm? Critter Hunter. So here's the question of the day. <clears throat> if you were a millionaire or super rich, what would you be doing differently in your life? And I was thinking about that yesterday and today. I wouldn't be doing anything different. I mean, if I was working the nine to five back home, I'd be saving and dreaming about this lifestyle. Living in the tropics, waking up whenever I want to go diving with friends. I mean, not everybody's passionate about the same things, but I love filming little critters. Uh, you know, sometimes I feel like that dude on uh, Walter Mitty that they can never find. He's always filming somewhere remote or photographing. Yeah, that's the passion. Ew. So yeah, I feel like if I was a millionaire or a billionaire, I'd be doing the same thing. Maybe I'd have a nicer car, nicer cameras. Maybe I'd have a crew with me to, uh, to film higher quality episodes of Critter Hunter, but man, this is the life. This is important stuff. Silicone grease. I take the uh, O-ring off, clean it really good. Those fish, but I'm, just, I'm over those, bro. I'm over those. Yeah. Go! Put the grease on it and then. Uh, yeah. Maybe Neil's here. He is. He's on the boat. You put the o-ring on and then you get your pineapple juice and you're done. Got my lights charged, I hope. I usually have them both in this position. But lately, I've been getting real close and like for leaf sheep, I need it right there looking straight down on the critter. So, good times. Let's go get geared up. Damn. That was bad. So you guys don't know, but we've been diving here like every few days because Tim found flamboyant cuttlefish eggs under a coconut shell. And we've been watching them. I've been filming them every day to, to watch so I can show you later the development. You know, they went from nothing to a little bigger. And then inside, finally, my last footage, I could see the little little dude swimming around inside. I, he's, he's had like red red eyes. But that video is never going to happen because he went down yesterday and they're gone. They're gone, oh, my babies. Yeah. So that so, was a lot of work for nothing. Yeah, I went down there and the coconut shell was flipped over and like completely cleaned out. So I think uh, something predated them. Yeah, me and Finn chased crabs away a few times. I don't know. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe without mama there to protect them. Maybe those, you know those goat fish or whatever that clean the sand with their mm -hmm. little flippers? Maybe it flipped them, I don't know. Yeah. Could be something we'll never know, but uh, yes, they're gone. And uh, until next time, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put the eggs on the screen with the little funeral music. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but honestly, we found we keep finding them now. I think it's the season. Yeah, yeah. We found some the other day at some dive site, but I don't think it was flamboyant. I think it was a different kind of fish. Right my and, house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Finn saw him hatching, but he was too late to film it. More funeral music. <laughs> no, they live. He filmed them flying away. <laughs> All right, let's go find some more, huh? Woohoo! Gotta check the gear. BCD. Weights. Wetsuit. Rental fins since I lost mine. My boots. Ah, uh, no mask. Never mind.
side without the mask. I'm renting this one because, well, borrowing it. Because if you guys watched my video for my new channel, I got in an accident and lost my mask and fins in the ocean. So watch that. before the island yeah we're gonna drop down there and try to do some exploration there is a stream coming in into the uh, ocean and there's also reef collapsing into it so we believe there's gonna be muck in between and that's where we're gonna dive so you found this like on google maps uh, actually uh, one of our guests in pura vida uh, lives there and told us about this dive site oh really they have a nice yeah. uh, beach house there and then they are going sometimes just uh, getting a tank and they just go do a house reef dive and they told me it will be a good macro, good critter uh, destination. No name, nothing. No name yet. Yes. No. 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 We have to let's, give a name. Let's no. name it. <laughs> Apparently there's a lot of coal mass shrimp, they said. They said. Yeah. I'm, I'm not believing it until I've seen it. No? Yeah. <laughs> it's we'll probably it's those. probably like a, an enemy shrimp, they thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot before the first dive. So this dive site's about a 20 minute boat ride from Pier Vida. I like to keep the, the camera in water before the dive when we're on the boat because it's super hot. And if I jump in the water when the camera is really hot and it hits that huge temperature change, then the front and the back glass lenses uh, just fog up so it won't go away for the whole dive pretty much so I keep it in the water and hopefully there's not a huge temperature change <laughs> yeah when you hear that music start you know you're about to see some awesome critters like this little looney break for example and once in a while, you get one that you've never seen before. But it's not just finding awesome critters. I'm also trying to perfect my craft with this Olympus TG6 and start getting better video. Hopefully I'm improving on each dive. Whatever species this nudie break is, I've seen a lot on this dive. They were everywhere. It's not the same guy. I probably saw 10 of these on this one dive. Including this one who's just sitting around eating those little blue sea squirts. I also saw this awesome robust ghost pipe fish. And this one was a weird color so I had to film it. I've been seeing way too many robust ghost pipe fish lately, so I don't film all of them. But this one was a unique dark green and it looked just like the leaves around him. It's pretty awesome. And you guys know that I love filming these, as well as the ornate ghost pipe fish, and I think you can see why. Here's a little bit of a close up and you can just see how weird green he is. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, I think you've seen a lot of colors of these, but this is probably a first. This little tiny eye, you can see now that he's not a piece of grass. Although he's doing his best to look like one. These guys blend in great. I wonder if they even have any predators. It'd be hard to find them if you're not the critter hunter. And now he's showing me his butt. I don't want to see your butt. Inside that little pouch are eggs, but I didn't want to get too close. On this weird green moss, I found these little clear glass shrimp. It was pretty cool. It made for a cute little scene. Just some good contrast and colors.
And then I found this little sea slug. He's not really a looty break because he doesn't have those naked gills, but he's definitely related and definitely a cool little find. Kind of fun to film. Here's another angle. I felt like the can of camera. I was just trying to see what this guy does all day. They got weird lives. Some of them are blind. They just kind of slither around the ocean floor looking for food or looking for love. On the other end of the spectrum for nudie sizes, here's a huge nudie. I don't know what species this is called, but it's quite common and I always call it the panda nudie. Like, hey fan, did you see that panda nudie today? Yeah, there's so many panda nudies, but these guys are quite big. This dive site was not the greatest when it came to critter hunting. There was just a lot of reef. Tons of reef and don't get me wrong, it is beautiful, but the little rare critters are having way too many hiding spots here and it's just impossible to find them. And even when you do find them, there's nowhere to set down, set your tripod, set the camera steady. You can't touch the ground, or you'll fall into some of these staghorns, or table corals, or delicate stuff. Reef like this, or dive sites like this with tons of reef, yeah, they're just not great for critters. But every once in a while, I know you guys like to see some big, beautiful reefs that we have around Dowin. So here's a little example of one. much on that dive but you never know I mean we still saw critters in the end it got kind of rocky reefy but at least we know now maybe we can call this one oh hey how'd you, how'd you do so so yeah but that was a cool different topography a lot of sand <laughs> a lot of, I was surprised by that and that was gonna be a lot more muck yeah it so, was uh, not my favorite but we nah. saw a few things yeah what do you see they saw a frogfish, but it was I didn't see it. And then I saw I just saw nudies. So at least we can cross this one off the list, put it on the the map, and maybe we'll just name it. Meh. <laughs> Not the too crazy on that dive, but hopefully on this next one we'll see something better, more critters. What do you think? More critters? Yeah. That settles it. <laughs> I'd be always ready. <laughs> so where, where are we going? Uh, this time. And the next time is actually a sort of a historical place. We are just having here, you see there, some uh, old uh, sort of a pier. Yeah. And on the back of that is the old place of the guru before of Negros from Fata Tropa. Father. Here, Fata Tropa. Oh. And Fata Tropa was uh, a guy who had a sort of a flagship 2000. And he had a small suit there with, uh, with turtles, with uh, lots of stuff inside. But when he passed away, then all the uh, foundation and all the, the club was down. Uh, but this place, they can still calling it uh, Aquarius. Oh, Aquarius. So the place where we are diving is actually Aquarius. So let's go see if the guru made a nice dive spot. <laughs> I, I think so. Maybe this place is holy. <laughs> So this dive site was not my favorite, probably my least favorite that I've ever done in Dawin or Chaton or Zambigita areas. Uh, I think most divers would actually love this site. It's super shallow, in fact you can snorkel here, uh, and there's tons and tons of reef just everywhere. But like I said from the end of the last dive, it's pretty hard to find critters. 
for awesome critter finding, you really need to be muck diving. And, well, this was not a muck diving site. Similar to Apple Island or something, you, there's no muck. It's hard to find the little rare critters that are fun to film. This site was all about the reef. And look how shallow I am. Not even three meters at this point. And I don't even know if I turned on my regular camera. I'm just filming here with the GoPro. Just hovering around all these reefs and stuff. At least I got to take the time to take a selfie and show you guys how cool I am. <laughs> I, I don't know if I should take this as a compliment or not, but I've actually had a comment say that my footage is too good and it's probably not mine. I stole it from Blue Planet or something and that I'm not even diving. So I guess once in a while I should probably take a selfie. But on this dive, I decided I'm just going to start trying to learn my white balance settings and try to get better at that wide angle stuff. Because if I get into a dive like this, I don't want to waste the time. I want to film something. But, of course, you also got to take time to take a selfie once in a while. I mean, you guys been watching for a while. You probably remember that I have the world's longest GoPro selfie stick. It's like three or four meters, so it's a lot of fun above and below the water. And I was playing around with it a lot in this one. Just kind of filming myself diving over nothing. I mean, I wasn't finding anything, and it was kind of boring. But eventually I did find this guy. He's a little nudie break, and well... Here's another nudie brain. There's there's a few nudies, I guess. But pretty common ones, species-wise. See some stuff, Terry? Did you see something? <laughs> good, good reef at the end, huh? My god, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. And the wood is nice. Oh. And the wood. Yeah, I didn't get I don't think I got to the wall. Yeah. That's quite a nice place. Yeah, nice not side. bad. Okay. Ben. Yeah. You're not a Filipino. I'm not. So, you right? Nah, it's too sand. much of that. What do you reckon on that one? <laughs> Probably the worst dive I've done so far on Dawid standards. Critter, critter <laughs> <one>. <laughs> yeah. So this is the worst dive in Dawid <laughs> standards you know and the best they, dive in mobile standards. Yeah, you know why they call this place Salawaki? <laughs> Salawaki. It's walkie walkie. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I got a lot of cool sweeter. reef. Huh? Mobile is way better than this Tessa because the core yeah, of the sardines and all that but I didn't feel like it's down standards it, 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 exploration come on <laughs> yeah of course we didn't have that expectation so no. when we're doing the exploration ones we what just see what we see sometimes yeah, we're lucky and sometimes we're not you remember our last boat ride uh what about it I remember no I don't remember anything yeah you pooped on the boat and then you thought it was funny and you took off running. Uh, no, that never happened. It was kind of funny. <laughs> you should do it again. I'll find you a good spot. Okay, do you? Well, surface interval is done. And this is, this is a new dive site we haven't exactly been to. We've been in the area because it's next to Thalata. But our friend Dan saw some cool stuff here. I think it's technically called the Aqua House Reef. There's an Aqua Resort right here, so maybe it's the Aqua House Reef. Anyways, we're gonna get in the water and see what we can see here. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> so on the last dive of the day, you are not gonna believe it, but there was no reef. It was so ugly and dirty looking, just plain sand and everything. And it was my favorite of the day. And perfect critter conditions. Like this little tiny banded pipefish. There was lots of leaves, so of course I looked at all those for little leaf sheep. I love leaf sheep, like this little dude. And I'm actually trying to find how many leaf sheep species I can find here on the coast and film them all. So this is probably the most common one right here, but still super awesome. Here's a little bit of a close-up. 
looks like this guy has two little eyes between his horns and you can see why they compare it to a sheep these little leaf sheep look like they're just grazing on this leaf <laughs> and I measured this guy and he's actually about three millimeters long and one millimeter wide nearby sticking out of the sand was this feathered sea star with the squat lobster on it I don't pass those guys up, they come in a lot of cool colors and I like to film them all. This guy was of course the same color as his host, which is how they get their color. I don't know what this is, but it was on another leaf, and maybe you guys can tell me, but it kind of looked like leaf sheep eggs. It was right next to a couple leaf sheep, so... Let me know in the comments below. And then I ran into this leaf sheep. The first one that I've ever seen. It's not even in my book. It's awesome. I later found out it might be called a Stillinger leaf sheep, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But like I said, I'm trying to find all the different species here on the coast, and this is the first time I've ever seen this one, or any of my dog buddies have seen it. So it's definitely an awesome find. And look how cute he is. <laughs> These guys are super tiny. I just have to look on every little leaf that is sticking out of the sand and there's always some kind of leaf sheep. But this guy, this species, that's a first. Uh, nearby, on a fallen log, I found this weird looking frogfish. He wasn't in the greatest angle, but he's still pretty awesome to see. You gotta love these guys. You never pass up those. 